Hey, you ready to watch this week's request by Jason Willis? Oh yeah, mausoleum. What did you just say? Mausoleum. Uh, it's mausoleum. No, it's pronounced mausoleum. You're just fucking wrong. Hey man, don't say I'm wrong. You'll be sorry. Or what? You'll put me in a mausoleum? <laughs> <laughs> Say it! Sing mausoleum! You're gonna spill all the beer! Mausoleum! It's mausoleum! Mausoleum! It's mausoleum! 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 It's mausoleum! Ah! Yeah. Say mausoleum! Mausoleum! Ah. Say it! Say it! No! Mausoleum! No. Say it! No! Say it! Mausoleum! 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 No! Mausoleum! Ah. Set! Set! Mausoleum! Hello and welcome to today's edition of Frightfully Forgotten's Trash or Treasure. Today's movie is a Patreon request. It is 1983's Mausole Mausoleum. Before we get started, what are we drinking today? Gatlin's Fall Harvest Lager. Mausoleum was directed by Michael Duggan. He brought us such classics <laughs> as Raging Hormones, <laughs> The Adventures of Turkey Dude. <laughs> That's got to be a good one. And Super Seal. <laughs> Super Seal. <laughs> and and seal or something. <laughs> <laughs> Marjo Gortner is in this. He was in Star Crash. Earthquake and Sidewinder 1. Ooh. <laughs> That's good. A lot of classics there, too. Oh, man. Bobby Breesy was in this. She was in Ghoulies and Star Slammer. <laughs> <laughs> All these fucking weird movies. Norman Burton is also in this, and he was in Bloodsport. Yeah. Planet of the Apes, most likely an ape. <laughs> <laughs> And the towering inferno. Mausoleum starts off with 10-year-old Susan attending her mother's funeral. She's there with her aunt, Cora. Susan's all distraught. Oh, mommy. <laughs> so distraught where she just takes off and runs. What seems for miles, it's, just a, it's super long. <laughs> kind of sees this building and super bad, superimposed smoke and fire. <laughs> she goes into this building with the smoke and the fire, the mausoleum. Eerie, and there's this like shadow of this figure. This bum kind of wanders <laughs> in. What's a bum doing in a cemetery? You see that shadow of that hand kind of like, nee, 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 and he's all, oh. <laughs> And he kind of walks out now back in the cemetery and just oh, boom, his head just explodes. And you see this hand coming out of the sarcophagus. 20 years later, an Aunt Cora is visiting Susan's psychiatrist saying she's worried about Susan. You know, it's coming up the anniversary of her mother's death. The psychiatrist says, I'm sure she's fine. Then she hands him this book, this diary. It's all nice yeah, and everything. The Nomad Family Diaries, it <laughs> dates back like to the 1600s and it's all about superstition and possession. Any woman that wanders into this mausoleum will be possessed by a demon. <laughs> <laughs> it's all ridiculous. Yeah. And he's all, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
Susan and her husband Oliver go dancing for the night. And I dig this place. I'm like, yeah. I wish places like this still existed. Like, it's not just a bar. It's like a kind of a cool dance club. Kind of dancing and... He's gonna take this phone call. That fucking asshole guy. Yeah, there's that bearded asshole guy. It's like with some other woman. Stop looking at her. He's like, you've been bitching about the same thing constantly. Forced himself to dance with Susan. He's like, ah, come on, yeah. baby. He's all flinging her around. So she kind of like, fuck off, and she just sits down. Oliver comes back to the table. They have to leave. Going out to the parking lot, and that drunk bearded asshole kind of, <laughs> ah, and it goes past them and gets into his car. She starts staring at him. I <laughs> <laughs> start glowing. This car all starts on fire. <laughs> and Oliver tries to get him out. And he's like, ah, no, it's too hot or whatever. He kind of backs off and boom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that bearded asshole just fucking blows up. You get introduced to the gardener flirting with her a bit and peering through the windows too, all looking and shit. She kind of goes onto the balcony. She's drinking some wine and he's chopping at this stump. <laughs> <laughs> pointlessly, pointlessly chopping at this stump. Starts seducing him from like the balcony. Yeah. Starts giving him a little bit of a tease. His face is, it just lights up like a kid on Christmas morning. <laughs> After he's done all of his tasks for the day, he goes to meet Susan. After the fact, the gardener kind of wants to go again, yeah. right? I've been with a lot of women in my <laughs> life. None of them quite go like you. Yeah. Son of a bitch, you take the cake. Yeah. So he tries to get her to go again. He can't rouse her. He's like, what are you, sleeping? I never sleep. She turns around, she's got one of those hand rake things and just fucking... Beans it right into his head. The next day, her aunt Cora comes over and she sees all this mist and fog coming out of the <laughs> master bedroom, all this green light. So she opens up the door. Susan's inside, is all possessed, mnemonic. Susan makes Aunt Cora levitate over the banister and you see her chest like rip open. It's like, holy shit. I don't know what this Aunt Cora did to deserve that, but <laughs> she's just loving and caring. <laughs> yeah. That night, Oliver is sleeping and he kind of wakes up and he sees Susan rocking back and forth in the rocking chair and she's like possessed, she's like full on demonic. Phones the psychiatrist and he tells him that something's wrong. Susan ends up seeing the psychiatrist and he ends up getting her into a trance. I'm gonna count to three. Yeah, three, that's all it takes is three. <laughs> you wanna put me in a trance, asshole? It'd take a lot more effort than that. <laughs> the psychiatrist puts her under and right away she starts turning all demonic. And right away he knows that there's something wrong. He contacts a friend of his. She reads through the diary and gets sort of the family history and how to stop this demonic possession. There's a crown of thorns in the mausoleum that he's got to get to stop this whole thing. And that's where we're going to end it. If you want to see what happens with Susan, with the psychiatrist, in mausoleum, <laughs> keep watching. <laughs> Holy Christ, that was a fucking yeah. chore and a half. Trash or treasure? What is the treasure? Well, the kills. The kills in this movie are fucking fantastic. <laughs> yeah. From when that guy, his head explodes. <laughs> <laughs> For no reason For no at reason. all. He's like, oh, okay, I know what kind of movie I'm watching here. It's the ant, when her chest gets all ripped yeah. open, I wasn't expecting that to happen. I was expecting her to maybe fall on something. Yeah, yeah. Which happens later. She wants that painting. Yeah. He's like, well, you can't have it. It's been sold. Floats him over that thing and just drops him <laughs> on that, <laughs> that horn thing. That big <laughs> horn. <laughs> Like, what the fuck is that? And how that thing is there <laughs> yeah. isn't like the public. Yeah. Well, back in the 80s when the malls had all those weird sculptures in them and everything. Yeah. And that fountain thing? Yeah. We used to have that. Yeah. Like yeah. Malls used to be cool. Yeah, now they're not. Another great kill is when that second gardener guy comes over to deliver those plants. And she seduces him, too. <laughs> oh, and his eye all just falls out of the socket and he's holding his own eye. And that segues into the effects, right? All the effects are cool for the kills. They're all practical effects, right? Yeah. This is before CGI. 
and they're awesome actually yeah and even the demon design for susan is really cool too yeah yeah it's pretty grotesque it's it's out there it's, yeah it's full body suit different parts of her are being yeah it's got too. those tits those breasts <laughs> and yeah. these heads <laughs> like what the hell is this another treasure is all the side characters in this movie are really good <laughs> we got the gardener that gardener oh, is fucking hilarious he's gold he man he kind of makes the movie <laughs> He's all eating and he's sleeping and they show him doing his chores, chopping that stump for no reason. All this useless yeah. work just to keep him busy. Yeah. <laughs> sleeping on that dock or whatever. He's all fishing and everything. Like, eating that sandwich, all the food's all coming out. Reading that landscaping book. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. The maid, again, is a very good character. She's super funny. And the use of lighting and shadows in this movie is, like, top-notch, really. Yeah. Like, that's one of the hallmarks of this movie. Fog and the mist to signify the possession, yeah. right? Yeah, it's yeah. The possession's happening. It's coming on. So you know to start watching out for Susan, right? I like the use of the shadows, like in the, the opening scene in the mausoleum where you see the hand, the shadow of the hand, yeah. the guy's head blows up. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's neat how they use the shadow. You don't see the being, you just see the shadow of the being. And that's, that's all right. you need. You don't need to see it. Then you see the demon later. Mausoleum is a good looking movie. It doesn't look cheap. And the music is fucking, from the opening credits, it gripped me in. I was like, oh man, okay. We're in for a real fucking treat here. I was like genuinely getting a little creeped out by the music itself. Which brings us to the trash. The whole story and the mythology behind this possession makes no fucking sense and they don't give it nearly as much explanation as you need. Just some diary with like the family history and or oh, any woman that goes into the mausoleum gets possessed by the demon. Like what? what why? Yeah. Where does this all stem from? Why is this one family haunted what? by this demon that lives in, only in the mausoleum? And from the 1600s, yeah. like... You think you couldn't figure this shit out by now? Like, <laughs> this happens every generation. Well, just tear down the mausoleum or, yeah. or move. Find a different place to bury your dead in this cemetery. Like, yeah. it's, it's so stupid. Yeah, we're not big fans of, like, over-explanation, yep. but this movie seriously needed more. The only way to get rid of the demon is put the crown of thorns on her head. Why more. is there a crown of thorns yeah, in, the, in the mausoleum? Like, what does that have to do with anything? The psychiatrist guy learns that, and then he has to get the crown of thorns. So then you're, you're wanting this wicked showdown between whatever is living in that mausoleum, that sarcophagus thing, and the psychologist guy, and no, he just he just pulls it off the door on the outside. <laughs> he doesn't even go in. That's one of the biggest letdowns ever. I was like, oh, I was all gearing up. I was like, oh, duh, he's gonna have a crucifix. He's gonna have some holy water stuff like that. No, he just takes the thing off the outside <laughs> of the doors and then leaves. And like, then goes to Susan and just puts it on. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe <laughs> a little more than that. Yeah. <laughs> so, what yeah. the fuck? The, the ending is very anticlimactic, and that's another piece of fucking trash in this movie is that ending. They gotta go back to the mausoleum and do it again with that demon. Yeah. But again, nothing is explained. Explained, or there's no action at all. They just go in and they do it. Yeah. And it's like, fuck. Okay, maybe th the second time around, we're gonna get a bit of a payoff or a bit of a show here. No. Nothing! No, no. <laughs> it's like, what? Ah, that's it. What is she doing with these bodies? Why is she killing? Yeah. There's no explanation why she's killing. See what she's doing with the bodies, and there's still nothing to do with anything. They're all up in that attic, which is all full of cobwebs, like super cobwebs. Yeah. It's like they got this maid that's there every day. Don't you clean that fucking room? <laughs> you clean every room in the house except for that room. Oh, it's yeah. super cobweb. And she's got that chest that she's pulling all those dolls and shit out of. <laughs> what is that? What is that all about? The only really good performance is Oliver as the husband. 
he's pretty believable. You can yeah. kind of believe that he's in this situation, but besides that, it's pretty bad. I mentioned this in the treasure, the creature design, pretty good. But at the same time, it's also kind of trash too, because it's almost too silly. Like with the heads on yeah. the breasts, and it's like they show it too much. Like it should be more in shadows and like kind of get a hint of it here or there. Maybe at the end you get the full reveal. Yeah. You tell the mouth doesn't move or anything. It's just ah. <laughs> right. That's one thing this movie struggles with. It walks the line between camp and serious and not really doing a good job at either. The movie's called Mausoleum, but it has nothing to really do with the movie. <laughs> totally useless. Yeah, the, the, the name of the movie kind of doesn't really suit what the movie's really about, <laughs> you know? Not at all. It should have just been called The Possession of Susan or yeah. something like <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Would have been good enough. Yeah. Okay, so Mausoleum. Trash or treasure? I still think this movie is a treasure. Yeah, me too. As much as we shit on it just now, yeah, it's still such a fun watch. It's so crazy and entertaining that you can't help but like it. Exactly. Even though parts of it are kind of bad. Yeah, and it mostly has to do with the explanation and the fact that they don't use the mausoleum enough, right? Yeah. And the poor acting, but I think the over-the-top effects and kills and all that stuff really makes up for it. Yeah. Any horror fan should watch just to have a good time. So until next time, keep drinking and watch Mazoleum. Mazoleum? It's Mausoleum! Mausoleum!